Hey everybody, welcome back to Gameplay First Impressions. Today we're taking a look at, of course, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. So this game came out a couple of days ago, it's taken me a few days to play through far enough to feel confident in, in what I'm going to say about the game. It's quite complex, it's probably one of the most complex games I've had to cover, generally on the channel I cover. Namely, smaller games, indie games, this being a, a big old AAA with all its systems and mechanics and things going on. It's a very complex game, it's a very interesting game, it's a very good game. I will say, I'm, I'm enjoying the game a tremendous amount. So th the game, um, Shadow of Mordor, is by Monolith, who have a history of originally, anyway, making PC games, then in about 2004 they were bought by, or taken over by, Warner Brothers. And from there they've made a range of games for consoles. They've made games like Fear, for instance, they made Alien vs Predator 2, which was one of my favourite games growing up. And um, recently they've also made the other Lord of the Rings game before this for console, which I never played, and it didn't interest me at all. However, this one interests me greatly. It's a lot of fun. Essentially, in this game, you play as the man you see before us, Talion, who is a Gondorian ranger, who um, is killed with his family. This is all, like, intro cutscene shit that I'm not going to play through, because content ID and stuff, but I'll give you a brief synopsis of what's going on. We are killed with our family, we have to watch our family being murdered, and then we are killed. While we're killed in this kind of like ritual, dark ritual type situation, while the Black Hand, some kind of high ranking officer in Sauron's army, is trying to recall an elf lord who is in wraith form, who ends up being conjoined with us rather than them. So we're like this dude Talion with like superhuman wraith skills from this high elf wraith type dealio that we've got. And we can switch between both of either Talion or the elf who's called Kelly Brembor. I think that's how you pronounce his name. And essentially what we're tasked with doing is taking down Sauron's army by doing various things like cutting off heads of orcs and uruks, which is fun. What we'll do is we'll look at the options menu because there's a lot of cool stuff to look at. Uh, typical stuff with like volume sliders and stuff. Um, so the video settings and in, in primarily what you'd be looking for is, is it a good port? Has it been ported from console? Does it work for, for PC? Yes, actually, there's a lot of good stuff here. Um, provisionally, so um, this is incorrect. It is in windowed mode, but I've set it to be a 1080p window via the um, config file for the the options for view options. Essentially, it will only let you set the resolution in percentages. In my base resolution is 1920 by 1200, and it only lets you do like 100, 90, 80, so on and so forth. So getting a 1080p window is not possible unless you do it in a config. You can limit the FPS, I believe it's hard limited to 100 FPS, so if you run a um, 144Hz monitor, you're not going to get those high, high frame rates. Even if you did want to get them, you're going to be hard pushed with the um, <laughs> with the amount of stuff going on for your graphics card. Um, various stuff, your V-Sync on and off, and gamma, display area, things like that. So essentially, um, the game has very, very high resolution textures that you can get, and if you see here, I've got texture settings set to medium. And you can look at the texture and What I do love is the fact that it's got individual panes telling you exactly what's going on with the game settings, what you can set it to, what can possibly boost performance, what can affect performance. So this tells you here to get the ultra texture packs, uh, or to get the ultra ultra textures running, you need a card with 6 gigabytes of RAM upon it. Which is ridiculous, because not many people will have a 6 gig card. You're talking like top end, top end stuff. And what I reckon's happened is, because the game is... You know how games sometimes have like a kind of sponsorship with the card manufacturers, NVIDIA or AMD? In this case it's NVIDIA, and I believe that at some point during development they probably talked with NVIDIA to say something to the effect of we're going to push this for say 4K, or we're going to push it for like high resolution textures, and what they've probably done is they're saying this is designed for like 4K resolution with really high textures, really high quality textures, and that's why you need that 6 gigabit um, of your, your card RAM there. But even playing it on medium textures, the game looks fine. Up close to some textures, it can look a bit, a bit kind of blocky, a bit kind of rough. But otherwise, it's fine. I've also toned down shadows and a couple of other things just to record because it's quite demanding. But the game is optimized so well. And if you want to see more about optimization or the, or the game settings, you can look at uh, Linus Tech Tips. Done a video on it yesterday. And I don't know why my voice went really high there, but they done a video yesterday just discussing the game settings and the benchmarking and such and how it stacks up against different cards, top end cards running right down to like the 770s, I think. Um, which is interesting if you want to see that stuff running your rig or not. Look at Linus Tech Tips, they've got a video sorted for that kind of stuff. 
Um, and your usual things, game settings. In here, there's not really much. It's just kind of your sensitivities for aiming, your combat prompts, and um, your controller mapping. You don't get to control the controller mapping, but keyboard and mouse, you can reassign and you can rebind your keys. You can use keyboard and mouse. I know several people have, and they say it works fine. I'm using the gamepad because it feels better to me. So I guess we should go in and look at the game and see what's going on. Um, so I played through 18% or equivalent 5 hours and 50 minutes, which is a lot longer than I usually would do for a first impressions video, but um, I think it needs that kind of extra play, just so you can get your head around what's going on. So we'll wait for this to load in and we'll talk about what's going on. I'm going to, I'm, so provisionally I'm not going to touch any of the story quest stuff. I don't feel there's any need to go into spoilers or, or any of the story quest stuff. I don't really want to go into that stuff. Mostly because there's cutscenes and cutscenes mean content ID. And I'm quite paranoid about that at the moment, seeing as the last video was heavily rogered by that. So, um, so essentially we start off, when you load back in, you're on one of these towers. If we look at our map by pressing back, you can see this world map here. Oh, hello. Nope, I want to go back to the map. Sorry. Right, we'll zoom out. So this is the map. I've unlocked every area of the map so far. And you've got these, um, these towers where you can... Forge towers, that's what they're called. You can fast travel between these, and you can also advance time when you're on there. Advancing time does a couple of cool things we'll look at later on. But you can see the area here. It's all completely open world, and what we can do is we'll go for a wee run around. And um, we'll just jump down here. And you can essentially run around the whole area. And, and do what you want. And a little spider here, run him over, there we go. And you can do whatever the hell you want, you can go and do various things. There's several types of quests that you can be given at the start of the game. So you've got, um, let's have a look here. So you've got your story quests, which are like yellow. You've got power struggles, which are, um, which are uh, like a unique mechanic within the game. Where you can go and fight an orc type person, which will do what was closest to us actually. So we're up here. Um, we'll go up to this one, we'll do this. Executions. This is like a, a kind of power mission where you can do an execution thing, and then you've got these white ones, which are like little, um, little challenge type missions, where it's like kill five enemies with a bow or kill five enemies while stealthed. Um, I guess to save time, we'll just fast travel over there. Now, the, the game is very complex in, in how it works. So it's an action RPG, but instead of it being like me going into it, I was like, well, maybe it'll be kind of like Dark Souls or. Maybe it'll be kind of like the Witcher series. And you would assume, you see the two swords, you think, oh, kind of witchery. Um, but it's not like that at all. There's not like any going up to characters, quest dialogue, none of that nonsense. Essentially talking between yourself and other humans, like the outcasts or the the slaves or the orcs. It's not like kind of questy dialogue stuff. All of your kind of um, relationships that you build with other characters is basically you and the orcs and the uruks. And it's done through power quests. The red, the red shaded ones and the the red coloured ones in the map. So basically, what we do is we go up to these power quests and we meet, say, a captain, and the orcs are all categorised into different rankings. that are like your low level kind of scummy guys. Then you've got captains. Then you've got war chiefs. And by fighting these captains and war chiefs, you accumulate power. And with that power, it means that you can grow stronger and do other things. If you lose battles with the orcs, this is where it gets interesting. They they then start accruing power as well. If you die, you accrue power, but they accrue power also. And this is the greatest part: the nemesis system. They remember the fight from before. They remember if they've killed you. They remember if you've been in a fight with them and they run away and you and and they kind of run away and get away. They remember all of these things and it goes into like a further part, so you can go back fight them again, and they remember these things, they know. Wait, am I getting shot at from somewhere? Hmm, I'm not sure. But yes, the orcs remember, and it makes really interesting stuff. Um, what I'll do is I'll actually show Sauron's army. So at the moment, I have um, uncovered a couple of little little people here. We've got Ratbag, who is a, a quest person. We're not going to talk about him so much just to avoid spoilers, but we've got a couple of war chiefs that we can see. Rook Dug, Broken Shield. And Zugor Ghoul Lover. These war chiefs and these captains are all um, random or procedurally generated. So if you're playing the game, you'll probably have different people in different positions. So say for instance we have a power struggle and we lose. This guy, this guy here, he's got a, a light going towards the war chief up there. He might have like some kind of a little battle. In fact, this is a better one to show because it's probably more realistic. So this guy here, Tugog Slash Face. I've been dealing with this guy a couple of times. Um, so, so basically, if we um, were to die, there'd be a power struggle between him and this guy here. And if he was to beat this guy here, Tugog, 
then he would take his place. And then he would rank up, there'd be an open space, he would probably move up there or something, then another guy would move in, and it continually cycles through new orcs for you to fight. Which is cool, so if you were playing the game, you would have a different set of orcs, and you build different relationships with these orcs based on your encounters with them. Which is absolutely, like, really fucking cool. I enjoy it very much. It makes it completely different to, say, The Witcher, where you would spend a lot of time questing around, speaking to people, building relationships with characters by completing quests, handing in quests, doing stuff. Not like this at all, it's, it's all based around these relationships you build with the orcs. Which is cool. Which I haven't seen a lot of in any game. Really, it, it feels unique, it feels fresh enough. I'm gonna brutalize this guy. Be brutalized, there we go, slashing you up, cutting you in the face, boom! There we go, sunshine. We'll have a sore head in the morning. So, what's the game comparable to? You will probably see comparisons the likes of Assassin's Creed and Batman, the Asylum um, game. It's the Asylum game, uh, Arkham, Arkham Asylum, um, or just the Arkham series in general. So basically what we're doing here is we're sneaking. You can sneak. If you press the right trigger, you sneak around like Assassin's Creed sneak. You can do parkouring, you can jump up on things, you can climb, you're very agile. Or alternatively, you can run in and just beat the shit out of them, and it almost becomes like a brawler. When you're fighting with the enemies, you can get in there slashing them up, there we go, kicking them about. And you build combos, so let me get a couple of guys. Let's go over here, say we'll get a wee fight going on. And um, you'll see the kind of fighting mechanics. And this is all pressing X to attack. Y on the Xbox gamepad is to block, which is all signposted clearly, which we'll see in a second. There we go. We block. Give him a little knee to the face. There we go. Give you a slash. Kick the face. Slash you there. Give you a slash there. One for you, sir. You'll see a combo on the, the right-hand side building up. Or left, rather. I can't even tell my left and right. On the left-hand side, you'll see the little combo counter coming up here. Four. Five. There we go. And if we keep building this up to a certain point, we can then develop this thing. It's an execution. Whoa! Hello, nurse. You've just lost your head, sunshine. And that is fun. That does not get old. The most interesting part of the fighting, not so much the the kind of Batman-y, brawlery stuff, it's the, the number and variation of um, animations that you get for every kind of way to stab, slash, and cut an orc. It's so cool. It's honestly, it's uh, like after the the current save that I've got is what, six hours, say, give or take, and the one before that was about one hour, so over the seven hours that I've played, say, of the game, I feel like I'm still seeing new animations or I still haven't, f I, like, I can't even say if I've seen the same one twice or more. I'd say at most if I've seen the same one, it's been like five times. There's so many different variations of ways you can fight and so many different animations for the deaths and the killing, the cutting the heads off. When you're doing sneaky stuff, you'd stab them and do brutalize and you'd stab them through the neck or the face. It's wonderful and it's brutal. It is very brutal. Um, I myself feel no remorse when killing orcs. Um, I know there have been articles <laughs> in the last few days about the moral dilemma of being a terrorist in this game, which you kind of are, I suppose and killing orcs mercilessly. Yeah, well, I, I kind of enjoy it, so there's that. If I'm a bad person, fair dues, but it's fucking fun, I'll tell you that for free, it's really good fun. Hello, nurse. Um, he doesn't even see me here, so I'm gonna just walk up and give him a wee slash there, in the shoulder, in the neck. That was different to the first one that we done, and you can go back and watch that, I'm fairly confident that was a different kill. And that's where Monolith have really really fucking like hit the nail on the head with the just the number of diff different variables of things you can do. The game feels so varied for such a simple concept. And and the basis of the game is very simple. Man in Mordor, orcs fighting, um, stabby stabby, brawlery type Batman fighting, Assassin's Creed sneaky sneaky, and it nails it all on the head really really well. Like so well it's, it's honestly one of the I was excited for this game, but I didn't really reckon it would be as good as it is, and it's truly, truly brilliant. Um, I mean, where do we pick a shortcoming? Because there have to be shortcomings, and, the, 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 and I've not even, like, fully discussed all of the different stuff. We've not discussed our weapon set yet, which I'll probably do just now, and then we'll look for what I would say is probably a shortcoming in the game. Um, but as it stands, so we have three weapons that we can use. Four, well, four technically, I'm gonna grab you. There we go, just shank you a few times. There's also a big old fucking dog thing hanging about that scares me. So uh, let's uh, climb up high. So we've got three weapons that we have to use. We've got our sword, which is, of course, with X we use the sword. If we're sneaky sneaky, we use the dagger. 
which is our son's sword that was broken in battle and he was killed, so we've taken, we've taken his broken sword and we're using that for like revenge kills, almost you could say. And then our third is if we use the left trigger, we've got a bow, which we then transform into Wraithman to use, and we use elf shots, which we can collect by draining enemies when we have them in that held grasp position. You can drain enemies of their power and grab stuff. On top of that, when you've got an enemy held, you can also accumulate information f about um, war chiefs and captains. Let's go and fight a war chief, and we'll talk about that as well. Um, and of course, there's another um, weapon, which is throwing daggers that you can unlock with abilities, which I'll need to talk about as well. My God, no wonder these videos sometimes take upwards of 50 minutes for people like Total Biscuit to do, because really, with AAA games, there are so many different systems and mechanics that are that are going on. It can be overwhelming almost to try and even discuss what the hell's happening. I mean, when you look at the review guide for this game, it's like 18 pages long of stuff. And I'm thinking, how am I best to talk about it all? How, how will we ever discuss it? How will we tell this story? That's the thing. How will we tell it? You're going to die. So we should look for a... No, we'll look for a captain. A captain's probably easier bait for us. You are kind of close. I should. That's where I was going in the first place, wasn't it? I'll walk this time so I can talk about stuff. So we can see on the mini-map that we're... Oh, you're welcome, slaves. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. On your way. Go on. You as well. Come on. Get out of here. There you go. Come on, lads. I am in your debt. These guys are interesting as well. If you help enough of these guys, or save them, they will begin fighting for you. So if you're in a situation where there are slaves and they know your reputation to be the cool dude with the wraith stuff, they'll, let, they'll start battering orcs for you at the same time as you're doing stuff. Which is cool. I like that as well. So we'll walk over here and we'll, we'll, we'll discuss. So the, the, the captains are kind of between your low-ranking orcs and your war chiefs. Your war chiefs are kind of, as you see up at the top left, we're looking to kill four war chiefs in total. The captains are quite difficult. These are the guys that will remember you for next time. Regular orcs, if a regular little private orc or whatever you want to say, like a low-level orc kills you in combat, he'll get promoted to captain and then he'll remember you for the next time. I just love the way that that works. I think that's... Why Why does that not happen more often? Why is that kind of level of complexity in battle not used? It'll use the same guy. He'll have the same name. He'll be promoted and he'll remember you. He'll then develop traits, which you'll get to see. If we look at the... Well, we'll start this mission, then we'll do that. So what have we got here? So, execution. To dispense justice against traitors, enemies, and rivals, Uruks, Eagerly volunteer as executioners. If not stop, the executioner will increase in power. So we don't want him to increase in power. Invade the execution to weaken Sauron's army. So it's uh, Tugog slash face is looking to execute Shag Shag Shugflak Shagflak <laughs> Thunderhead. Indeed. Now he's at power 17 because I've lost a couple of fights to this guy. And he'll remember me when I come up to him, which is an interesting part to show. So hopefully this doesn't con I do enjoy a good execution. Oh, we all do, my friend. How long will make you hurt for this? So uh yeah, so I'm gonna get in here and we're gonna speak to this guy. Manville! Manville! Will you keep coming back? Even when all men are dead? Oh! So he remembers me. Now he's a shielder. He's got a shield and that makes him a bad bastard. Oh my god, there's a lot of them. Run away. Oh, throw knives at him. Run away. Oh, no. Okay, so this is when we can probably see the, the fight as it is. There's a hunter here. That's bad. Right, boys. One at a time. One for you, sir. Oh, my giddy ant. Run away. Oh. So, what I do like about the combat is the, the very obvious... What happened? Oh, okay, so that disrupts him, so that means that I've done a good thing, I think. So if we look at the the report here, we don't get to fight them here, but you'll see the kind of, the, the murder chess that happens. No, he wins anyway, because he's got so much power. That's a shame. So, uh, yeah, now we've got this situation to deal with, which is going to go on and on. Oh, no. Um, I probably am not strong enough to, oh, wait, hold on. Do I have any shot? Oh, balls. Shoot the barrel. Oh, no. Okay, I've not got the explosive barrel trait then. <laughs> so we'll try and fight. There's a lot of strong enemies here. Primarily him, because they've got a shield. 
if they've got a shield, they're very strong and they're difficult to fucking work around because they'll just block through a lot of stuff. So if I just keep jumping over his head, let's see if I can get. Oh no! Damn, he's almost killed me. X. Saved. Wow! Uh, the, the saves are awesome when you get a good save. Now I'm gonna die here probably, which will then mean that this guy will raise in power once again. I managed to just dodge through that. Ooh, block that. Punch you in the face. There we go. Who's next? Oh, you've a, a hunter just threw something at me, I think. I'll probably die here. Oh, no. Uh, uh, why? I'm dead. So this again will show what I was just discussing, how this guy... So this gentleman here will increase in power. So he's went from power 2. He's going to duel with Unknown Captain over here. And he's just killed him. So he's now become a captain. So he's become the legend. <laughs> and this guy's power's increased as well. And his power's increased also. Oh, fuck. Oh, yeah, because the rest of the power struggles will then continue. And then when we load back in, once we've, um, once we've revived, shall we say, there'll be a new set of power struggles which we can then look at. So we're still, we're still going with the chess. Oh, we're still going. The most interesting part of this is that um, it's just like raw, like pure emergent gameplay. You're developing relationships and battles. Now they all fucking hate this guy. They're all contending for this guy's fucking perch. See, the war chiefs, they, they tend to dislike the war chiefs quite tremendously. So they're all going to be fighting the war chief. So if I can go and do the war chief, then hopefully, in fact, who are you again? Angry about being hungry, furious that there's no fresh meat nearby. Okay, he seems like a bit of a bastard, indeed. Well, we lost the, the battle there and we died. These, this happens. What are these towers of silver? They are lights to guide us in the land of shadow. Indeed. Where all other lights may fail. Pale reflections of the light of the two trees. We also gain power for dying, system. which is the interesting part. So, I, I'm yet to kind of figure out the... The true penalty for death, of course, is that the other um, power struggles will continue. And then those other orcs, the captains and the war chiefs, will increase in power also. But aside from that, there's no real consequence of death. Because, of course, you are someone that's dodged death by being wraithed up in the face. You, um... You don't really have any real penalty for death apart from the, the increasing power of the other chiefs and, and captains, which is cool. Because as I said, the emergent gameplay, you're then beginning relationships with like guys that say if you wanted to play the game yourself, you would have a different set of guys in there, different captains, different relationships, different people you'd be fighting against, different faces. And the number of variations in the, the animations doesn't just stop with the killing. If you've looked at the orcs already, you probably realise they all look massively different. The variation is huge, which is wonderful. Hello. Now, what we'll do here is I've grabbed this guy, so we'll do interrogate. This is another facet of the game that's interesting. The Wraith Man has a lot of cool stuff you can do. You can gain intel on different characters. So what I'll do is I'll gain intel on this guy over here. Can I not gain him? No. Oh. Okay. I can only gain intel on a captain then. Damn. He doesn't know enough. So who are we going to learn about? I'll learn about this guy because he seems to want to battle with the War Chief. So. We've got this fellow here, Muzzaglob, Dwarf Killer. Indeed. So we know where he is. If we want, we can go and we can tag him and go and fight him. Now you have to die, Archer. There we go. Wah! Tremendously satisfying. Hmm. What are they talking about? Are they talking about their grog again? They're obsessed with this grog. They, they love a good drink, the old orcs. So, the three weapons that we have, we can also... If we look at our our, um, our weapons and runes, we can apply runes to our weapons that will give us certain effects and, and, and uh, modifiers. By killing war chiefs and captains, you get random drops of different runes that you can put on. And the the better your relationship is with the, say, the war chief or the, the captain. So if you've seen them three times and you've lost them three times before, if you finally kill them when they've got really high power, you'll get some really cool stuff dropped, like epic runes and things for adding onto your weapons. They do things like, say here, um, this one increases the range of Attract. Attract is a skill you can use by holding the right trigger to sneak and then pressing Y, and it means that you can attract enemies towards you and then do things like ledge, kill them, various other things. You've got 
Like, fail voices. Recover all focus and all healing for killing a captain or warchief. Which is totally cool. If we do that, then we get all our health back. That's awesome. As you can see, you can apply that to all three of the weapons. You get them by... just. I think they just drop on random. I can't seem to find any rhyme or reason with that. Also, while we're looking at some menus, you also upgrade abilities. We've got one point here which we can put into something. So, so far, I bought pretty much everything on the ranger side, apart from here. Um, so, what we got... And this is new to me, actually. So, we've got a swift finisher. Reduces the time required to perform a ground execution. Sweet. Vault stun. Vaulting over an enemy... We'll now leave it stunned. That seems very useful, actually. Especially with the shield dudes. Brace of daggers. Um, throwing daggers through th three can be thrown in quick succession. That seems to be quite good. And shoulder charge. Um, tap right bumper. Oh, that's cool. So, so we can bash through their shield. That seems like it might be useful, because the biggest trouble I've had is with the shield dudes so far. And then on the wraith side, you get wraith skills, like pin foot in place with the... The Wraith Bow, Arrow thing, Stealth Drain. Draining will replace your arrows, your um, elf shots. These we can't get yet because we've not done the requisite quests. Wraith Finisher. Will explode? Holy balls! Victims of... That seems awesome. I'll go with that. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go with that. So that means if we do a flurry on an enemy or a drain... They will explode into a hail of blood and shit. So I've basically been through all the systems in the game. Story-wise, I like the story. It's It takes a back seat to the action though, which getting in these huge fucking battles is the best part. When you're doing all the fighty-fighty, that's the good thing. That's that's what it's at. You, you want to be constantly just fighting people. And a lot of the quests will take you into areas where you will have to fight. Sometimes, of course, that's not the case. Let's see if we can get his head to blow up. No, I can't. Right, we need to find a... Hold on. Just throw you around a bit. Um, yeah, we'll just stab him through the face. I'll try and get a flurry kill and see someone's head explode if we can, if that's at all possible. We got any orcs in the area that have a head that needs exploding? There's always someone somewhere. If we go into wraith mode, I've not even mentioned this yet. Kind of like the Batman skill. You can see enemies around, you can see things. You know where, like, there's living... People, they're chasing... I think they're fighting. Oh, they're, they're fighting the bloody slaves. That's not on, chaps. Hmm. Excuse me, gents. Coming through. So, let's do the flurry. Ah! And then we can do this. Oh, I was trying to get a... Uh, Stealth killing you. Whoop! Watch for that. There we go. This is where I like. This is where it gets really good. So I've just done an execution on this guy or a, a finisher as such. Now, fighting these guys, they'll start doing attacks from various angles. We can basically just, like, survive for quite some time. Let's see another finisher here. Different to the one before. So good. By pressing both. Is it X and Y at the same time? No. By pressing B and Y at the same time. There we go. We'll block that one as well. Hit you in the face. Hit you. And then... We, oh, we lost her. Wait, did we kill them all? We did. So satisfying, it's unbelievable. Let's add on another power struggle, shall we? In fact, there's a new one up here. Who are you? Um, Pug the Slaughterer. Nah, nah, nah. nah, nah. Let's go after this guy. Right, humiliate Zugor Ghoul Lover by making your supporters flee in terror. That sounds like the kind of thing that I'm into. We'll go over and we'll do that. This is going to be a war chief. Oh, fuck me. These things are a pain in the arse. You can ride them, by the way. If you drop on their head, you can ride them. I'm just dodging it the way in case it bites my ass. Up. Up. Say daisy. Up we go. And we'll jump on him. Oh, there we go. Tame it. Tame Oh, no. Uh, what, what button? Why? Ah, there we go. Now we can ride the Karagors. They're fairly handy for getting across the area quite quickly, or for killing enemies. We can do your usual stuff, like we can bow from the top. It's kind of like Zelda-esque <laughs> when you're running with Epona on the, on the field, on Hyrule, Hyrule Field. You've got that similar kind of mechanic. Run about, you've got your bow, get the bow out, you can aim. On your own, though. No need to lock onto enemies. We need to get up there. Um, I'm just going to drain this. And then it'll probably die. No. 
Let's see if I hold that. Ah, okay. I killed it just because I don't want it hanging about. Um, so we need to be up here. It's fairly easy to navigate around the map. There's not a lot of... No, we need to be over there. Hold on. We need to die. Assassin's Creed style. Now, you might ask, is there much incentive for going sneaky sneaky when you're so fucking badass? Yeah, totally. You can be overpowered. Like, I've died. Like, that guy that killed me earlier on. Um, the, the main dude that he was with has killed me like three times now. It does get difficult. You are incredibly powerful, but you can be overwhelmed. Fighting against a hundred enemies, especially ones with shields and shit, it does become very difficult. So, we've got a Zukor Ghoul Lover. Um, so, humiliate him by making his supporters flee in terror. Um, yeah, okay. So we're gonna have some situations here with... The war chief rules his forces mm. through fear, but we shall show him the true meaning of terror. Okay. Hmm. Right. Filthy club. So what I can do here is use my Brutalize skill here. And um, Brutalize is a way of, like, instilling fear into the orcs. Hold on, I need to be sneaky. Now, if I... Walk over here. If I brutalize this guy, it might do what I need. So where is he? Hold on. Where's our man? There he is here. Okay. No wait, that's not the guy I was looking for. Was it? No, I was looking for someone else. Okay, we killed him, and, um, oh no. Okay, this guy's new. Oh, was to get five of them? Oh, right, okay, I, I get it now, I've gone and ruined it, I've ruined it for myself. What I was meant to do was make his supporters flee in terror, not kill them. Well, we're killing some people now anyway. And this is where you see, I might die here very, very possibly. This is where you'll see the kind of extent of how fucking hectic the battles can be. Watch out for that. I'll get you. Oh, see, this is the guy that's a problem. We need to get the shield guy down immediately. Fucking get him with a punch. There we go. And get him with a flurry. And his head will explode and then I can kill you. Oh, it's so satisfying. You would have to be... The most boring person in the world to not find this fun. I shouldn't say that because that's a very cruel thing to say, but certainly it's a lot of fun, and I would imagine a lot of people will find it interesting. It's, um, brutal, yes. Do I have sympathy for the orcs? Not at all. No, fuck them. Hold on, what do you want to do? He was going to grab me. No grabbing. Okay, that was tremendously brutal. This guy's getting ready to leave because he's gone green. And I'm just going to keep going. Slash the old stomach. There we go. One of those for you, sir. Get one of those for you. I'm going to jump over here. And I'm going to hit you again. And he's dead. We'll get something for that. We get a rune for the sword. Is that the dagger? Oh, come on now. A man's busy picking up his rune. And oh, they're all fleeing in terror. Very good. Wow! Very brutal indeed. And we look, can look at our new rune, maybe? No? Okay, it's still telling me the same thing. Sometimes that happens. I'm not really sure why. Have I ran out of elf shot? No, I've not. Who knows? We'll go to start. We'll look at the rune that we just got. So it was for the sword, and we'll see. Is it a, is it a good one? Strength from Courage, level 3. Recover 3% health on a flurry kill. Not ideal. Uh, I think what we've got is better. You can see a quick summary on the, the top left. Or uh, top right, rather. I'm doing that more and more regularly. I've noticed that I keep fucking forgetting what my lefts and my rights are. Dear Lord. Um, but we're still on that mission with the War Chief to instill fear into the minds of the other dudes. So we've, we've done, like, a mission within a mission. We've, we've killed one dude. But that's fine. We, we can now go and get back to what we were doing before. Because I fucked it up. So I need to, uh, make the supporters flee in terror. So what I'll do is I'll brutalize you then. And that should do what I need. Okay, that's one gone. So it'll then probably give me another one to do. Ah, this guy over here, okay. 
Cool. And we'll just do that um, for five times. A lot of it is, like, do five of this or do three of that. I mean, the variation in the quests can be um, a, a little samey, but it makes up for it in the kind of variations in the re relationships, as I've said, that you build with these enemies that you have to deal with. So we'll brutalize this guy, the other one will run away, hopefully. Yep, he's gone. Two out of five, done. And you could say it is brutal brutalizing something to instill fear into the minds of the other orcs. Terrorism almost. At the same time, dear lord, it's fun. I, 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 have a, I have a hard time picking a bone with the game. I'd say, yeah, the, the variation in the quests could be a little more... Um, or the quests could be more varied, is the, the easiest way to say it. A lot of it is the same. Do five of this, kill five of that. The game doesn't have many... Like memorable, interesting situations outside of main quest and these relationships that you build. You're not really looking about exploring. You're not going to find like interesting little locations that are... Or at least so far I've not found anything. It's not like you would in, say, Skyrim, run about and find things. It's more action than it is RPG, is basically what I'll say. If you're going into thinking this is an action RPG, it's going to have like memorable stuff like, say, Dark Souls, Skyrim, The Witcher 2, The Witcher. It's not really like that, it's not that kind of game, it's much more heavily um, emphasising the action rather than the fucking, the, the, RN, the, um, the RPG stuff, which is okay. There's nothing wrong with a bit of action, hello lads, let me just run over this way. Um, am I going to finish this quest in time? Who knows? We don't really have a time limit, I just need to instill fear into one more guy. Ah, cool. Easy. Easily done. Up you go, son. There we go. This guy's a good climber. His wraith skills are tremendous. Okay, there's the guy that we need to see over here. Oh no! I was holding down A for too long. I don't think anything get, was ever there. get up here. Up you go. Now if we can get an enemy somewhere over here... In fact, they'll probably go for this guy because there'll be an orc closer to him. So what are these guys doing? They're running about. I think they, they're aware that I'm here, they're just not sure where. So let's have a look at the Wraith and see if we can find... Can I brutalize any of you chaps out here? Oh, hello. I'll attract him over, then I'll try and get him. Come on, there we go. And that should hopefully scare this other guy. You didn't see it! Oh, you fucking son of a bitch. Um, well. I'm, oh wait, hold on. I don't know what it was. Must have been nothing. If I can get that guy to be over here, then I can hopefully. Someone's killed him. Wait. I can I get him with a sneak? Uh, oh, maybe that'll work. Ah, okay, it did. So I've humiliated him, and therefore this guy's appeared. And they'll start chanting his name. And now we have to deal with him. If we lose to him, of course he'll remember the next time, or if we kill him, we'll gain in power. They're all fucking terrified. Right, big chap, what do you want? You maggot! You may have put the fright on my boys, but I'll crush your skull. See, this is this is what I mean, just the variance, the, the number of things that just feel different. Now he's got his little entourage. And hopefully if I fight well, I might actually be able to get out of this alive. Okay, you're dead. Very much so. In fact, this guy doesn't seem too strong. I think we can take him. There's a great flow in the combat. I feel like I flow between enemies with great proficiency. It gives me a lot of feeling of, like, great power. And that's what you want in a game like this. You want to feel super powerful. It's Lord of the Rings for Christ. Well, not Lord of the Rings. It's Middle Earth, we should say, because it's technically not Lord of the Ringsy at all. It's positioned between the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. Shield dudes are a pain in the arse. If I can get over him and hit him once, there we go. And I can just flurry him. Oh no, it's another one! The skin from your soft let me give you a let me give you a finisher straight away. It's 
still gonna kill him, but it'll damage him to some extent. Is this guy? Oh, I think this guy's a war chief as well. Oh, you, oh my god, there's so many. Where's the other guy? Where's the one I was fighting originally? Hold on. Excuse me, shield men. Coming through. Yeah, hold on. I have no idea. There's so many captains. Oh no. Um. <laughs> Shit. They probably triggered the alarm. I killed a captain here. Now, if I can try and pick up that bloody. Rune. Rune me. Oh, balls. Fuck. Oh no, run away. Um, we're, we're basically within an inch of our life here. I need to fight. Well, oh no. The focus. Okay, give them one of those. That's fine. Then. Okay, we're killing them. We're, I'm, I'm still surviving, but there's... I, it's, oh, there he is there. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Um, hey! Just, just saved. Oh, I hit it back in his face. Excellent, wonderful. So you want to see? Oh, no! One shoulder down. Okay, I'm gaining health. I was retreating! Fuck him, run away then. I've got them running scared now. Oh, you motherfucker. Hey, fuck him! Oh, no. I'm going down! Oh, balls! Woohoo! Okay. Oh, it's, it's tremendously good. Honestly, like, fucking the combat, 10 out of 10. 11 out of 10. Wood, wood combat again. It's fantastic. I'm not even kidding on how much fun it is. <laughs> Cutting them heads off. Woo! Oh, you fucking, you damn guy. Hit him with the, him with the wraith hand and fucking flurry him. Oh, no. And I'm going down again. I'm going down with the ship. Do I get another chance? Nope, I'm 100% I'm dead. The scab's gotta be worth a promotion. But that's fine, because that's how the game plays. Death! I'm just like, ah, oh, give me death. Fuck it, we'll see what happens. So, Meku, or Maku, you will then upgrade yourself to a captain. And then we'll see them shuffling about. Damn. He's gonna be super powerful. This guy's gonna be the fucking biggest badass known to man. So they're all, they're all fighting for fucking dominance. And as I said before, they'll all remember these things happening, they'll remember what's going on, which is great. So yeah, so Shadow Border, I d d highly recommend it. It's um, priced at £30 on Steam, which may be steep for some people, I understand that not everyone has that money, but if you're going to buy a game and you like Assassin's Creed and the Batman games, then certainly you can't go wrong with this, especially if you also like at the same time Middle Earth or Lord of the Rings type settings. The game's fantastic, it looks great, it plays great, it's optimised very well. Power the variation in animations and killing and different things you can do, the variation in just like brutal stuff you can do to orcs to makes it fun uh, on its own, but with everything else combined, the, the story as well is quite fun to play through. But You've got your, like, captains and war chiefs, the relationships that you build with them and all various things going on. I'd say it's a great game. Fantastic. I'm really thoroughly enjoying it and I can't wait to play through the rest of the game. So yes, I will uh, sign off here. Shadow of Mordor. Very cool game.